Hi, my name is Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation and I'm a little proud right now because we were just notified by YouTube that we have had a million views. It's quite a milestone for us and I'm very pleased and I thank those of you who are subscribers and I encourage those of you who are not subscribers to subscribe because our view of marriage is so different we come from a very positive place we actually recognize that love is the foundation of marriage and that the things that you should have in marriage and you're entitled to have in marriage and you can have in marriage are the promises of marriage which is number one to be happy who gets married for other reasons than to be happy and the other reason is to experience unconditional love. You're not going to find that anywhere else but marriage. So this particular topic is a tough one. How do you handle a verbally abusive husband? And I have a couple of opinions on this. One opinion, and please don't be turned off by this opinion but the problem is that it has become sort of trendy and acceptable to label people with a label that really is about one part of them one attribute you know it's like someone gets angry and they explode. Who knows what triggered them? And someone saw them getting angry. And now their opinion of them is they're an angry person. Or someone breaks down. She feels tremendous emotions coming up. Maybe it's the time of month. Maybe there's something that reminded her of her mom who's passed away. Who knows? But she breaks down at a time when it's sort of, whoa, what's going on? And the people who witness that go, oh my God, she's an emotional person. And she may not be. And the angry person may not be an angry person. And so this is the problem with labels, is it focuses on one particular attribute and then it colors that whole person from everyone's point of view. And I don't think that's the right way to look at people. We are all so complicated. We have so many attributes in different proportions. You know, even our being as we live, you might say that there are three levels that we operate upon, operate within. One is a real primal level. Those people are mostly in prison, but they're because they're pathological. And those are the people who just operate off of instinct. It's so hyper selfish. But most of us have that going within the three. The other is more mundane. It's where we have learned to temper our temper. We have learned to try to achieve a higher standard of behavior for ourselves, have higher expectations, we even have a philosophy. But then there's that highest level of life, that level of love. You know, you married your soulmate. Well, what does that tell you? That tells you that you're a soul and he's a soul. And you have chosen each other as soulmates and a soul is love, isn't it? And that's where we're supposed to live our marriage, at that state of love. And unfortunately, the common knowledge about marriage doesn't even talk about love, really. They, they do it in a romantic way, but not the real love, the love of the soul. Souls, by the way, have, have two other attributes, you might say. One 
is wisdom. We call it intuition. But a soul, because it's a chip off the old block. It's, it's part of God. That's the part where God created man in his image. We're souls. So love is what we are. Wisdom is what we are. And joy. Joy. Ever new joy. So those, you might say, are the three descriptions of you as a soul. But you didn't remain as a soul. You took on human form, as did your husband, and you got this physical body, and you got a mind. A mind that is embedded in a physical brain, and this is where the problem comes up. It gets even worse. You're a human being. First you're a soul, then you're a human being, and then your gender. You're a woman. He's a man. And this lends a lot of differences to how we behave psychologically. This gender business has a big impact. Even though today they're telling us, oh no, we're all the same, but we're not. You know that we're not. So, what's going on? You're finding that your husband, from time to time, maybe a lot, is abusive towards you, verbally abusive towards you. He might even be emotionally abusive towards you. But remember this. This is really important. Now, by the way, I'm explaining this so you can see it. In no way do I condone verbal abuse, abuse of any kind coming from anyone, man or woman. I don't condone it. And in fact, in the course for men, we have a course for men and a course for women, in the Course for Men, the very first thing I address with men is their anger, because this is a natural outcropping from their drive to survive, and it's mostly a masculine trait. It's also a female trait, but mostly masculine. So, what do you do? How do you handle your husband when He's projecting all of this negativity towards you. And this is a great question. So I'm going to give you, now that I've given you all this background, I'm going to give you actual things you could do. One thing is to detach yourself from his behavior. And that means you don't take it as if it's about you. Because when a person is exploding at someone else, it could be that that someone else triggered them, and you should be very careful not to. But it's not about you. His behavior is tied to his habits, his drive to survive his issues, his fears, his conceit, his ego. What is the ego? The ego is the bodily infested mind with a little bit of soul. It's a pseudo soul. It's his ego. It's not about you. You didn't do it. You didn't cause it. You're not the cause. Even if you triggered him and pushed him, and were mean and kept after him even when you saw that it was starting up which of course you shouldn't do you should back away right away if you see he's starting to go down that path never match someone's abuse because it just keeps going back and forth back and forth and it builds until there's sometimes physical violence too. So you don't want to keep going. Step back. How do you do that? One, 
you take a deep breath, you know, and then you go two breaths out, just like that. I'm going to show it again, you know, and tense your whole body. I just taught you a relaxation technique. <laughs> Use it. It'll pull you away from his um, spouting off. It'll give you more focus about the tension within you and you want to relax it. You want to become calm and you don't want to become receptive. You want to start, I always suggest start talking to God. Don't pray to God, don't beg him to make him stop or anything like that, but talk to God. God, I, I love you. I'd much rather be with you right now. And I pray for my husband that he comes out of this safely, but I'm going to put my attention on you, which means you're not going to react. Very, very important to not react. Again, it's just going to build. It's just going to get worse. Don't react. Okay? So that's one thing. Step back. Pull yourself out. Realize that it's not about you. And typically what happens, male or female, when someone starts throwing these dirt bombs at another person, they run out of them. But if the other person is throwing them back, well, you have a dirt bomb war and you don't want to do that. So the number one thing is to pull back. Now, if you're not able to, because it could really be getting to you emotionally, excuse yourself and leave the room. Say, I have to go for a walk. Go for a walk, come back in 10 minutes and see if he has calmed down. And if he has calmed down, doesn't take much calming down, then you start talking to him as you should, because he's your husband, and you realize this is a flaw that he has, a short fuse, and you go, you walk back in the room and say, honey, I love you, I really do. And if he starts up again, say, oh, I'll be right back and go for a walk again and come back. Because typically these kind of things wear themselves out. They're not sustainable. And that's really it. Get out of range. First, get out of range by pulling yourself into yourself. Recognize that this is not about you. It's about him. And if that's not helping the situation because you want to help the situation. You don't want it to explode. You want, don't want it to keep going. Then go out for a walk or get a glass of water or something, but separate yourself physically. Okay. Now you really should subscribe to this channel so you could learn more about marriage in a positive way. It's not enough to just deal with these negative things. You got married in order to be happy and to feel love. And that's what you deserve and you should have those things. So you could deal with this, but what you really need to do is be working on your marriage. That's what you really should be doing, but the right way. And that's what we're about at the Marriage Foundation. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I appreciate your coming to watch us and God bless you. Leave a comment, leave a like, and take care. Thank you.